Okay, so the last seam that we're going to do is Taylor's Edge Slip Stitch. Okay, Taylor's Edge Slip Stitch. So, step one, on the right side of the seam sampler, on the right side of the seam sampler, I'm going to mark a line one and a quarter inches. Okay? Remember, I'm marking it with something that's removable. Then, if you want, you don't have to, and normally I wouldn't, you can mark a line at a quarter of an inch. So it's a quarter of an inch and then one and a quarter. Okay, so let's go take it over to the sewing machine. Okay, so step one, what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to just do a small tailor's edge. Now remember, you're doing this all on the inside because you want the hem as if this was the inside of the garment, okay? Now, before I do this, let me just ask you guys something. Has everyone copied the skirt pattern? Yes. yes. Does everyone have a dicky pattern? Yes. yes. Okay. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to do a small tailor's edge. So I'm going to take these two. Take a few stitches. Reverse. And again, just like when you did the tailor's edge, I'm holding it a little taut. From the left. Did any of you try that? Yes. Was it helpful or ridiculous? What? Helpful. 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 You can tell me that something I uh, recommend is ridiculous. So you're going to sew towards the end, reverse, and then clip your threads. Then what you're going to do is I'm going to go to the ironing board and I'm going to crisply press this up on the line that I've drawn. So what essentially I have now is a one inch seam allowance, correct? Okay. Needles are an important consideration when you're hand sewing. Do you want to buy nice needles for yourself? You want to try different size needles and see what you like. Thank you. You're going to find you like different size needles. Everybody has their own little weird preferences. I happen to like number nines, sharps. It's just what I like. And as you can see, I'm doing this with my fingers on the thread for a few minutes. Um, for those of you who know who Natalie Chain is, do any of you know who she is as a designer? Um, Alabama Chainin is an American designer. She's um, a sustainable, she does sustainable design. She uses all organic um, jerseys, knits, and it, her work is all done by hand. I spent four days in a workshop with her in Florence, Alabama um, in the fall of 2011. Um, so she does this thing where she runs the thread because everything she does is by hand. And if you do one thing this week, if you Google Alabama Chainin or Natalie Chainin and you look at her work, you're going to be blown away by what she does. Um, so she does this thing called Loving Your Thread, and everything she does is sewn by hand with buttonhole thread, heavy thread. And the, knot, the knots show and everything. It's really, it's unbelievably beautiful. Um, and so she does this for a few minutes with her thread before she sews by hand. The oils from your finger essentially go on the thread and prevent it from um, knotting. Have you ever used beeswax or something like that? Well, this will achieve the same thing. So, as you can see, it's a single strand of thread and it's looped over in my needle. And I am going to start at one end. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm not going to put a knot into my thread. I'm going to take four stitches in the same place to lock my thread. And if somebody wants to take my sample, 
and look at my sample for this so you can pass it around to see it close if you want to take a picture of that with your phones that would be good but to know that the videos will be up for this as well has anyone checked out the videos Yes. yeah what do you think let's get some feedback yeah helpful too wordy too long yeah okay so four stitches and what I'm gonna do is this I'm coming up on my hem of course I've got a knot that's really pretty amazing And what you want to be careful of is this. I'm sewing from right to left. You always want to be conscious of somebody who's sewing left to right or right to left. So I'm coming up, and what I'm doing is this. I'm taking one to two threads. Okay, one to two threads. So if you look on the right side, you could see that there'd be like a little indentation, correct? If the thread was matching... You, you really wouldn't see it, okay? After I do that, I'm going to come down to the hem that's folded up and come in at a 45 degree angle. This is all mine. Well, maybe I didn't love my thread enough. my sample? Is it being passed around? Okay. So what you're doing is you're coming up, you're taking one to two threads, and it's creating like a bar, a straight line. And then you're going down at a 45 degree angle. How far apart do you think those stitches are? One eighth. Quarter. Between an eighth and a quarter, right? So there's one to two threads. And then I'm coming about a small quarter away, and I'm sewing. So these stitches are going to be perfectly straight up and down. And then I'm angling it at 45 degrees, just above my tailor's edge, and coming out. Now, do you see this on the sample as well? Mm -hmm. So again, what am I doing? I'm coming straight above where I've come out. I'm taking a small stitch, one to two threads. What? Which thread? I'm picking up threads on this from here. From the fabric? From the fabric. So let's just talk about this we're saying is the fabric, the self. This is the hem, okay? So I'm picking up one to two threads of the fabric. I'm going in at a 45 degree angle into the hem and coming up, okay? So it's creating like little bars straight up and down. And I'm going to do this all the way across. You do the last couple stitches, you're taking a couple threads, you're going in at an angle. And then you have a choice. You can either bury your threads by folding this fabric over and doing four stitches, or if you want, you can just take four stitches in the same place. Either way is fine, but what you want to make sure so here I am right at the end, correct? So I'm just going to take four stitches in the same place. One, two, three, Four. So you want to make sure you're not going through to the other side, and then you can just clip your thread. Never clip your thread. Never clip your thread right, right, right at the end. Always give yourself a little bit of a tail, and then you're done. Okay? So we've now completed the seam sampler. 
We've done the double fold machine hem. You've done a single overlock, which means it's single layer, a double overlock, flat felt, French, tailor's edge, stitch and pink, and tailor's edge slip stitch hem. Okay, so that is the seam sampler. If you noticed my original sample had overlock at the top and the bottom, I just did it to make it look a little needle, neater and last a little longer, but it's a great way if your pieces aren't perfectly even to even some stuff out there.